to Between Heaven and Earth, an internet radio talk show where we help you connect spirit and divine guidance. Lisa Kay, your host, brings you shows that can enhance and transform your life with tips and new ideas for more happiness, abundance, and better relationships. Lisa is an expert on intuition and can show you how to strengthen your inner guidance to empower yourself. Each show is positive and uplifting to inspire your day. Her guest speakers are specialists on self-help, positive thinking, spirituality, and conscious living. Be the best that you can be with Between Heaven and Earth, conscious living for your soul. show before and she's absolutely phenomenal wonderful i love her her name is dr mary helen hensley and she's back today to tell us more about what she learned from actually being in heaven and i'll just go over her story quickly for you again um she was on our show back in december and that show is called a healer from heaven (laughs) and if you're interested you could go back and listen to that one in the archives um and she has a wonderful story but anyway i'll I'll give you the synopsis here back in 1991 while she was driving to a christmas party uh, mary helen was hit by a car that was going over 75 miles an hour and basically the car t-boned hers and uh, just prior to impact mary helen says that time stalled and she temporarily left her body and experienced a life beyond the earth plane. And at this moment, she realized she had a choice. She could either remain in her body or exit from the earth, go to heaven and stay there, uh, allowing the remainder of the scene to just unfold without feeling any pain. She didn't have any pain at all. She was just witnessing it. Uh, She chose to leave her body and go to heaven, um, but then she also chose to come back to her body and to the earth and fulfill her mission of being a healer and helping others. And ever since, she's embraced this um, lesson of living life to the fullest and inspiring others around her to do the same. And um, and I think that's just a wonderful, amazing mission, which, um, you know, just to have that memory and have that as your life mission, helping everybody, helping people like me and you out there. So uh, a little bit about Dr. Mary Helen Hensley. She is a chiropractor, a metaphysical healer, and an international motivational speaker. And she's authored numerous books, including The Pocket Coach and The Chakra Fairies. And her latest book is called Promised Uh, Promised by Heaven, A Doctor's Return from the Afterlife to a Destiny of Love and Healing. And she now lives and works in Ireland, and she's there with her two daughters, and um, she's also gifted outside of the five senses. So welcome, Mary. It's so nice to have you back. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. This is wonderful to be on again. Thank you so much. Oh, it was great. We had such a wonderful time last time that it went so fast, and I felt like uh, there was more to to say. (laughs) So I'm so glad. Total time warp, that was. (laughs) Thank you for coming back. Uh, Yeah, and I actually just, um, as I mentioned before the show, I just uh, went through the show again, um, and I've edited it it to be put up into our archives um, where we have the best of Between Heaven and Earth. And uh, I'm going to have actually a new all-encompassing show called The Lisa K Show, and that's going out, um, that's going to, should be out in the next month or so with all the best of Between Heaven and Earth radio episodes, and plus more podcasts. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to broadcast that on people's, phones where there'll be an app they can download and get all the shows right there. So you're definitely going to be one of them, uh, one of the shows that we'll have there. And so this is part two. So oh my God. Yeah, that's really cool. So um, That is. That's very exciting for you. Yeah. And it's nice to have people like you to be on the show and kind of help our listeners, um, and it helps me too. That's part of why I do the show because I learn so much, and it, it transforms my life every time um, I I do it. Uh, so it's great. I had I wanted to ask you um, 
after you had your life review, when so so you uh, had the accident, you left your body, went to heaven, um, and here you are with I, I guess you would call it your soul family or your guides, and you're going through your your life review, and at the end of your life review you realized how to live your life better because now you, you kind of got like that second chance. Okay, now I go back. I remember what it was all about. And, um, and in the last show you said, my bar was raised on how I need to handle situations in my life, but how I have to treat every action with complete, utter, and unconditional compassion. So how do you live your life now with that, that utter and unconditional compassion all the time how do you do that <laughs> as my dad would say in the south woo doggies <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a challenge mm. um and it is it's something that you it's it's a conscious action it's something um you know you have to you have to put thought into it on a daily basis it's not something that comes naturally i don't think um, because we are, we're human beings. We're reactive. We're um, yeah, pa- like, impassioned. We're, yeah, you know, people do things and it's, to it's, you, you know, and exactly. they make you angry. You want to react. Passion. You want to get back at them or, or, or you feel hurt exactly. and you want to hide. So what do you yeah, do? Yeah, exactly. And so one of the things that I have to be very careful with myself about is that, that in knowing what I know, that I'm also not so hard on myself that I don't allow myself to feel in the moment. Um, you know, it's, it's doing it with some balance. It's not, um, I'd say my children are probably the biggest area where I have to exercise that it's taking a deep breath and not being explosive. It's going, Mm. do I really need to say what I feel like I want to say right now? Or is that going to create lasting damage? Um, Mm. or if I'm, you know, if I'm, if a, if a child's getting ready to step out in front of the car, I'm going to yell at them. Of course. Yes. Um, is if it, somebody's is it wrong, underwear though, got so left it, in the bathroom floor, I'm like, is it worth me making somebody feel badly about themselves? Or can I approach this in a way where we can, um, you know, and I don't want to be all sugary, saccharine sweet either, do you know, because that's not right. real. Right. Um, it's finding that daily balance. It really is. And right. I have to, I have so, little conversations in my head constantly before the words come out of my mouth. <laughs> Uh, well, so, I, I guess I'm that's weighing and measuring. what it is. I think, uh, yeah. so it's really like you're saying that balance and then you, of course, when we're very emotional, um, you have to, you do have to kind of catch yourself. Um, but you know, cause I'm thinking, and you did say just a moment ago about living in the moment of, of being, and if that moment you are, um, upset, you're angry or you want to react, it it doesn't sound like you're saying you shouldn't feel that, right? Oh, no, absolutely not, because I, I don't think that's honoring, you know, okay. the whole point of being here, which is to have the human experience and, and to, to go through the gamut of emotions. You know, my issue with people is when they sit in one emotion and set up camp, you know, and it's like, okay, <laughs> I'm not moving on. They stay in sadness for their entire life or they stay in, you know, a, a false joy for their entire life, a non-reality, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's riding the wave that's the big thing you know and so in my house you know you've got i've got t- two prepubescent teens and i'm in menopause so you know you can ah, only imagine oh my the, gosh. Uh, I know the dialogues that's... going on in my house yes, so I everybody can, I, is yeah. trying to <laughs> Isn't that funny how life does that to you i was thinking that same thing because i you know my my son who's he's not prepubescent but he's he's just turned 18 and i'm going through menopause through that later teen years and you know i think uh the junior year in high school is probably the most difficult to go through. And, and then, you know, life, then there's life happens. So, so you do go through all these feelings and, I, you know, like you said, I, you don't want to sugarcoat everything all the time. But I think what you said, which was important, was how you react and, you know, do exactly. how are you going to affect And it's, well, it's accountability. It's taking accountability for your actions and, your, and, and what you're going to say. And especially when you're dealing with children. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you, you have to think about the fact that just because you're feeling a certain way and you're angry in that moment, can, can what you do say leave lasting damage with them? Or is it, you know, is it something that's going to blow over? Like, ah, come on, go in and pick up your stuff, please. You know, I've asked you five times. That's normal mm-hmm. stuff. But if you mm-hmm. freak out and, you know, actually make somebody feel less than because of your anger or make somebody feel like they're not good enough or not worthy 
of your, you know, of your compassion in that moment. Um, that's, that's where it gets, it gets dangerous, you know? And, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I have my girls trained now where they, you know, if they hear me do something that's uncharacteristic, they're like hormones. And I'm <laughs> and I go, yep. <laughs> and I apologize. You know, one thing that we do in our, in our house is we kiss and we make up all the time. Well, I guess that's, I the, have become that's one of the key really things. good at apologizing. Yeah. Otherwise you mm -hmm. feel like, you know, you have to control yourself all the time. And then you can't be you. Um, but you know, it's, right. it's that, right. you know, what can you do after but, it? The but as you well know, stuff. menopause has a way of making you not you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And, um, but you know, I think it, for people who are not going through menopause, I think there are other things that get us into certain states that, you know, we don't realize our home hormones, whether they're stress hormones or, um, you know, whatever, whatever it might be that, that th those things are affecting us and that we don't always have complete control over what's coming out of our mouths. I think we feel first and then, uh, we rationalize and then we make excuses for, but, you know, I think being honest is really much more important than what you're saying. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's, everything counts, you know, that was a huge lesson I learned in that, in that death experience was, everything counts, you know, picking up a piece of paper off the table and moving it and to, you know, to the other side of the room, every action that you really? make counts. Every little, even the little and things, every little thing, especially the little things, you know? Um, huh. and so I have found one thing that I do differently, um, ever since that took place. And I, you know, I get tickled at myself is I'll stop in the moment. If I'm doing something, let's say like, um, taking out the trash or emptying the, or taking the clothes out of the dryer. Mm -hmm. I'll stop in that moment and be consciously aware of what I'm doing and going, isn't this cool that I'm actually doing this right now? I have oh, I to love that. I have it's to put a, it's my really being in the moment heart into that action. It's being in that moment. Uh huh. And understanding well, how important that is because it requires your focus and your attention. I love that. Well, we're going to go to break right now. And when we come back, let's talk a little bit more about that. I love that being in the moment. We'll be right back. Great. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM radio network. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships, Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleash, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleash every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. And welcome back. You're listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio, and I'm Lisa Kay, your host, and I'm talking to Mary Helen Hensley, and we're, we're talking about um, basically what she learned going back to heaven and coming back and learning what it is that we need to do, all of us need to do, to live a more fulfilled life. And just before break, Mary Helen, we were talking about being in the moment. Uh, you said every little thing counts. Um, like doing the laundry or, or just being present, being 
in the now. So when you say every little thing counts, what does that mean? Why is it so important? I think because, you know, the whole idea of being here, being in the experience is, is, is to be conscious of, of the fact that, you know, we're here for such a short time. And, you know, really, if, if you manage to live into old age and, you know, if you're in your 80s or 90s, mm-hmm. it's still, it's mm-hmm. a blink. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I came back and determined to do was to more or less be used up the next time I go and to be squeezing every last drop out of life. And part of that for me was not to just let, let life pass me by. You know, I stopped rarely, you know, I love like the action of going to the cinema with my children. I love sitting down and watching a movie with my children or a movie that matters to me. But the idea of, um, you know, growing up in America, it was it was very common. I don't know if it still is. I haven't lived there in a long time, but there's mm-hmm. always a TV on in the house, always, 24-7. And I remember in our house, the TV was always on and it's just, it becomes a part of the background and you'll sit down and people would just sit there and watch TV and not because they actually wanted to be watching it, but because it was on. And it's that kind of, you know, I'm real careful and cautious about using my time that way anymore. Like if I'm doing something, it's because I, you know, it's necessary for my day to day or it's something that I actually want to be doing. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't use any of my moments on, on things that that are just um, mindless, I guess, mindless actions. And I, I try to take stock in everything that I do. Like I said, I could be unloading the laundry and I'll stop in the middle of it and I'll go, this is actually cool that I'm sitting here and I'm pulling these clothes out of the dryer because that takes my full awareness. It takes my full consciousness to go, okay, this is a job that needs to be done. And I mindfully will walk over open the dryer and I'll pull those clothes out. And it becomes almost like a walking or meditation. And the idea that I'm putting everything into that moment and knowing that there's an outcome that I want to see, which is having clean clothes and my kids have clean uniforms for school and um, and that it's a diversion from the the other types of activities I do where I'm writing books or I'm working as a chiropractor. Um, and that's something that other people might take completely for granted as a chore, that I take that as a mindful activity. And I, I really try to apply that philosophy to everything that I do. Mm. You know, what, driving what, is it that, and, what is it about that that what, that's so important? Important. I mean, was there something that you realized uh, from looking at your life review, or what is it that? Makes... Absolutely, yeah. That was that was so such a highlighted point in that life review um, was the fact that everything counts, and mm. because everything is a conscious action. And even when you're doing something that's mindless, you are consciously deciding not to utilize that time. Um, and how did it express know, it, itself? It was, was it, was there a, um, I'm just trying to, I, it may have been that your life review was just sort of beyond words and hard to, to explain, but I'm just, no, do you know how they, um, visible. no, this was specifically during a moment with one, with the guides. And do you know how it was shown to me visually was with a, pen I'll never forget it there was a pen sitting on the table um you know and there there was a table and um like a writing the pen? pen was picked up like a writing pen uh-huh. and the pen was picked up and moved about six inches from one spot to the next yeah. and I'll never forget that and and uh, he looked at me and he said that matters as much as you think it matters to pay the toll for the car behind you I pay the toll for the car behind me because you know I love watching them reach their arm out the window and then they pull it back in and when they're told that their toll's been paid. I love the faces when they drive by, some of them in, in utter disbelief, like who is this nut job who just paid the toll? Um, some of them honk and wave. Some of them will speed past because they think I'm stalking them. You know, I I, I love that. And there's that. that's the reward for me is I enjoy watching the reactions. Mm-hmm. And also there's, you know, for me, the benefit of, of – I hope that one of them maybe because something nice was done for them might turn around and do something nice for somebody else in the day. That's my hope. I have no control over it, but that's my hope when I do it. And so I do it because that's a, that's a consciously, you know, a positive pay it forward type of action. What they were trying to explain to me though, was that everything matters that way. Not just the things were the thing that you think you're getting some kind of a payback for a reward. And in that case, it's a reward of feeling good. You know, I do this action and I get a positive rewarding feeling about it. And the point they were trying to make was that in every action, in every action, it counts. 
not just the ones where you think you're going to feel good at the end of it. Every action counts. Every action needs to have your conscious intent behind it. So it's a conscious and intent, also, but, but not necessarily exactly. well, like what you said that has to have a value for it. It's more the it conscious just, being. They all don't have to have the, yeah, it's not a payoff, a feel good factor for every right, one of them, right. that each one of them is conscious. So you're fully present. You no, know, because the, the feel good factor ultimately has, as you know, my ego loves to, my ego loves for those people to fly by and go, oh, how great is it that she paid our toll for us? And, you know, I get right. a laugh and a smile off the fact that they're going to have a good day, but that and is still not, ego driven. That, right. And that's not completely, that's not it. That's not what it's about. Exactly. You know, and I still do it, you know, so uh, my ego and I are at peace with that. I enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, well, maybe that's part of it. <laughs> it's um, Exactly. It's, but it's the fact is that every action um, doesn't have to be something that's a reward to the ego. Mm -hmm. um, that every, I think the point they were trying to make with that was that every single action counts. And that yeah. if you can be consciously present in, in that, then you know, you're going to drive your life in a more positive direction. You're going to drive your life in a more uh, rewarding as far as an experiential situation, yes. not rewarding as in I feel good, but rewarding as in I'm going back with more tools in my basket. Yeah. And, and maybe it's a, a, a transcendent thing where, you know, we can't really put words on it, but other than to experience it and then um, it, 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 it's a, a fuller life that, that comes out of that. You can only understand it when you right. do. And mm. It leads into one of my, my more favorite uh, points from the, from the entire near death experience, which was it's all good and not good as in um, hooray. It's fantastic for me. It's all good as in it all matters. So, I think what the whole point led to was the fact that if I open a bill and there's a big whopper of a bill in, in the post and it's something that I did mm -hmm. rather than getting upset or cringing or letting my stomach churn or whatever. And I look at that and I go, well, you know what? That's a high electricity bill because I used a lot of electricity <laughs> and isn't that great? And rather than getting all upset about it, I accept in that moment, well, you know, I use the electricity and there's the bill. So I don't need to overreact. I don't need to spin into a tailspin. I might get some news that some, a friend from home died mm. and I need to sit in that moment and go, okay, every experience that I'm going to have, not just the positive ones, they mm. all matter. Each one is developing me as far as my soul's growth and my soul's intention and my soul's reason for being here. Each experience, experience is is moving me forward towards that that's why you know mm -hmm. when I when I speak and I'm talking you know I was talking to a friend this morning about um the experience of being raped when I was 17 which I can mm -hmm. speak about like my my bowl of porridge that I ate this morning mm -hmm. you know it's um there's not an emotional um payoff attached to that I'm not gonna you know I'm not in a victim mentality I'm not looking to uh for anyone to feel sorry for me. I'm not looking for someone to go, Oh, isn't she so great? Because she can talk about this. Right, the reward right. in that is that the experience was right. valuable to my personal growth. What, yes. Even though most people would perceive that as a negative experience, it's one that I would never change because it was important to my, my personal growth. Right. So it's seeing all experiences, positive and negative as mattering. They all mm. count moving mm. that pin mm -hmm. and, and six inches across the table. I, I like that. I like that. What? Why do you think you chose to have an NDE? Why do you, a near death experience? Why do you? Why did you choose that? Well, that was explained to me uh, um, by the, uh, the the council, the you know the group of individuals, the beings that I would communicate with on a regular basis in my healing work. Mm -hmm. um, that was explained to me, and it was a it was a real aha moment because. Um, when my life unfolded and, you know, I, I came in with some abilities, you know, I had, mm -hmm. I could always see things before they happened. I had prophetic dreams. I, you know, I had all sorts of things happen growing mm -hmm. up and I wasn't utilizing those to their maximum potential. And obviously I had made, made a deal, signed a contract, came in with the intention of, of being a steward. I came here to serve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by the time I was 21, and, uh, you know, the most I'd use those abilities, as I always joke, was, you know, I'd write down the score of a basketball game and crack open a beer and we'd laugh because the uh, score was correct. <laughs> and um, that was the extent of my service to mankind. 
And so what I had done was I had, you know, I had made a deal in soul that had I reached a certain age and I wasn't utilizing the gifts that I had been given in a way that was helping others, that there was going to have to be a big intervention that would basically remind me of why I had come here. And if I chose at that point not to stay, if it wasn't suiting me, if that was not what I wanted on my agenda any longer, I could go. I had the option of of staying when I died. Um, yes. Or I could come back and I could change the whole ball game. And so luckily for me, I remembered, not luckily because the other side was wonderful, but, you know, I'm I'm happy to report that I remembered because I'm, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have certainly enjoyed my life since. It's been a ball. And, and- um and those that's that you, why that was set up. Yeah, that that explains it. That makes sense. So those that you met on the other side, your guides, um, and it sounded like you were meeting them or remembering them in the, this lifetime for the first time. Um, do you still communicate with them? Do you do you feel and know that they're there with you consciously? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah. is it in a? Now I wouldn't see him like we don't see him at coffee, but yeah. um, you know I don't I don't see him that time. Yeah. But I, there were several times that I saw them in that particular way again. One of them being several years later when I had a, an anaphylactic shock episode. You know mm. I was allergic to shellfish and didn't know it, and I was at a banquet and ate um, Ouch. crayfish, Ouch. and um, you know went into anaphylactic shock, okay. and um, this. You know, I'm in the floor and I was at, luckily I was at a chiropractic convention. So I was surrounded by doctors and, um, this, a fellow, actually a New Yorker, um, Donald Epstein, who is, he's written many books and he, um, this sounds, this sounds like we're going to get into a really, we're we're getting into a really, a really cool story, but we're going to go to break and we'll come back. All right. Go to break. We'll let you finish the story and then, um, okay, okay, we're going to go to break. Hang in there with us, everybody. Come back. Remember that party? Remember that was oysters, but that's a shell fish. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. As difficult as it is to believe. There are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The name is Bond, James Bond. No, the name is Joe, The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on oldtimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. You're listening to OTRFM. Part of the IOM Radio Network. And welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay, and we are um, on the radio uh, talking to Mary Helen Hensley. This is Between Heaven and Earth Radio. And we were uh, we were actually getting into a really cool story, I guess. Um, 
Ray Helen, you were telling us about how you were Yay, anaphylaxis. Guess, broke, yeah, anaphylaxis <laughs> shock and the, from eating shellfish and something to do with spirit guy are your guides. <laughs> yeah, so well, you had asked, had I seen, do, did I see them? And I was giving you an mm-hmm. example, you know, yeah. I don't see them every single day. Am I aware of their presence? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, but I, I wouldn't like sit down, like I said, and have coffee with them every day or anything like that. Um, no, I would. But <laughs> I had several instances following, <laughs> that would be so cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, following the accident. And um, I used to live on the Intercoastal wa- Waterway in Charleston. And um, there was a dock. And our poor food was shrimp because it was free and it was in the backyard. And so we used to shrimp all the time. And I think I actually ate my lifetime quota of shrimp in a period of of about a year. And it was one of those situations where I was not allergic to shrimp. And then suddenly I was allergic to shrimp. Because it builds up. But but you you probably were a little bit. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah, I had no warning. Mine was instant. And, um... The, I was at this banquet, and luckily I said with a lot of chiropractors, but Donald Epstein, who he's, he developed network spinal analysis, if anybody out there is familiar with, with that, it's a, it's a wonderful, um, wonderful approach to chiropractic that's um, gentle and very non-invasive and, and quite remarkable. And um, he happened to be there because his son was in school with me, and... He is an extremely switched on and very spiritually aware individual. And I will never, ever forget the moment where I had been, I had been put onto the floor. My throat was swelling shut at this, at this stage, the ambulance had been called and Donald Epstein walks in and he started doing some contact points, um, on my neck, on my body. And I had my head turned to the side and I remember distinctly looking over in the corner and there were the two guides. Wow. And it, it's not like they were waiting to take me away. It wasn't the same <laughs> as my experience in the car accident, but they were just there and they were observing. That's mm-hmm. what was so interesting about it. And so mm-hmm. I remember seeing them. And when I saw them, I felt more at ease with the fact that I felt like I was dre- breathing through a, a drinking straw. Um mm-hmm. Gosh. You know, and I, I was calming down a little bit there. And next thing I felt a hand move my face back over and it was Donald Epstein. And he was moving my head so that my eyes were looking into his eyes. And he said, don't look at them. Stay focused on me. Oh. And I went, yeah. So now I'm trying to gasp and catch my breath. And in my head, I'm going, oh, my God, you can see them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you know, af- afterwards, of course, he shared with me that he had been able to see them. And it, it, he views the world in a very interesting. I mean, he's like really? the original Matrix guy. Uh, oh. Um, yeah, he he sees the, a, a web of 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 energy when he views the world, and so he said, wow. "Yes, I did see them," and and it was fascinating. So I've had several experiences where they've appeared when I have been close to the walk the line. Let okay, so but they say. they just they just um, appeared, the you know, as letting them know that you're there, but they didn't they didn't really talk to you or interact with you at all. Yeah, it wasn't a, yeah, it wasn't a Calgon take me away moment. It was a, we're just here almost maybe even as a reminder going, Hey, don't cross that line. We know it's tempting, (laughs) but, um, you know, you've already been here. You already, you already made that choice. You're right. Right. Um, It's it's just comforting. Yeah. Completely comforting. That's that. I, yeah, I have a zillion questions more for you, but I wanted to take a moment to um, do a, a couple of announcements and let people know where they can reach you or me. Um, my name is Lisa K, and uh, you can get me at lmk88.com, and that's my website. And um, I not only do I do this radio show, but I also uh, teach people how to connect to their divinity within them, which I think is your intuition. And, and actually, I'm going to ask you, Mary Helen, a little later about what you think about that. But um, uh, let's go to what, what you have out there for people. Um, Mary Helen, you've got your latest book is Promised by Heaven, A Doctor's Return from the Afterlife to a Destiny of Love and Healing. And uh, I, I believe they, people can get that on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Where else can they get I guess any bookstore? Yep, any bookstore. Yeah, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Simon & Schuster. Um, any of those websites, and um, and, and your I'm website, currently working on, 
on a book is, of notes. Uh, it, oh, that's Mary Helen Hensley. Mary Helen Hensley dot com, and I'll spell it for you: Mary Helen Hensley H E N S L E Y dot com. Uh, so you can find out more about Mary Helen there, and um, also you were you're speaking uh, at A R E uh, with Neil Donald Walsh in Virginia Beach. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, I'm. Uh, Sounds so I'm exciting. Very excited about that. <laughs> Yes, I'm leaving. Um, well, I go to Dublin tomorrow, and I fly out on Friday morning. And um, I'm very excited because it's also my mother's 87th birthday on Saturday, and she oh, thinks I'm not coming birthday. till next week. Ooh. So I actually get to pull one over on her, which is very hard to do. So I'm yeah. very oh, excited really? about that. Well, yeah, hopefully she. And then we so. are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we're hitting the road, and we're going over to the. The Association of Research and Enlightenment, um, the ARE at Virginia Beach, the Edgar Casey facility, and um, I would do a, a lot of work there when I'm at home. And um, this is a the soul's journey um, to the afterlife. I think the the conference is called. It's a three day conference. I know there's information about it on the ARE website, and um, um, with Neil Donald Walsh, John Holland, um, PMH Atwater, who I love. She, oh, she yeah. has done, are you familiar with her? She's done yes. so much research. Yeah. She's, on, she's like the goddess. The I love her. <laughs> the goddess she's of the goddess. experiences and yeah, afterlife really. Exactly. Wow. So I, I'm just, you want it. This is for me, like, you know, people are going, Oh, this is going to be so great, you know, to go and listen to you speak. I'm like, are you kidding? Hitting. I'm so excited to go hear who I'm speaking with. <laughs> oh, yeah. And absolutely. I can't wait to hear them because I'm still such a fan. And, you know, I love I love, I love PMH Atwater's work because she's done such a brilliant job as someone who has gone through a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. She she went beyond the kind of wow factor of, oh, look, I've been dead. Here's what it's like on the other side. And she really went to the core of what happens to the individual who's been in the experience, which, you know, people might think it's all, you know, peaches and roses coming back. It's exact. It's, it's actually quite difficult because your entire paradigm has to shift. Your entire perception of who mm -hmm. you are and what your life is has to change after an experience like that. And also <laughs> things happen such as sensitivities, chemical, chemical sensitivities, light sensitivities, sound sensitivities, um, mm. you know, your perception of um, like what we were talking about before, being consciously aware of everything that you do, because you know that you're going to be watching that again. You know that accountability is essential because it's not some big God sitting on the throne judging you. You got to go judge yourself. And let me tell yes. you, you want to meet your own worst critic? <laughs> it's you. Oh, yeah. And um uh, you know, so she did such a beautiful job highlighting the fact that um, while it sounds really cool to have gone through a near-death experience and survived, that there are, you know, some pretty heavy price tags attached to that. Um, and she, she did such a beautiful job articulating what, you know, people like myself who've been through those kind of experiences, what we actually experience on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I can no longer wash with soap. I'm chemically sensitive. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't be around perfume. You know, I can't eat anything with chemicals in it. Um, you know, so it's it's interesting, and there's so many different facets of it. So I'm just really excited to be yeah, honest to be, be, I want to sit and listen to her. Participant. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yes. I do too. You got me. So that's the 13th to the 15th. If anybody's interested, go check out the ARE website. And what are you going to be speaking on? What is it? What is your topic? So I'm, you know, I'm kicking it off. So it's because the whole thing is about life after death. I think yes. the fascination there is the story they want to know what happened and they want to hear the the nuts and bolts of you know of what it means and then what does it mean afterwards you know once you've been through this experience that's that's all, all well and good but what are you doing with it afterwards how are you utilizing this to serve how are you helping other people with that and so that's more or less what I'm talking about is the making the choice to come back and taking on the responsibility of of using the experience to help other people grow do you think because uh, I don't know anybody who's been through it who doesn't choose to do that to be quite honest. Right. Uh, do, do you think um obviously not everybody goes through this we come into this life and we have no memory of where we've been. Uh you do the near death experience and then you see where you came from. Um so do you think 
there's a reason why some of us go back to see it and some of uh, some of us don't. Apparently, there's a there's a price to pay if you do go and have an NDE, and then uh, the coming back. It sounds like what you're saying is you guys who have experience to come back to help us um i guess live life better what would be your message yeah and and with (laughs) with no disrespect to anybody else who's had an nde i think we come back because we didn't get it (laughs) we didn't get it to start with and uh, you know i'm only joking but it's um you know my whole purpose is to try and create the same feeling that i was allowed to experience in that experience so for other people without them having to die, that's, yes. the, that's kind oh, of, I, the love that. of it. I want people to be able to touch that. You know, I don't want people, yeah, this world does not need another guru. I don't want to be anybody's guru. Oops. I don't want anybody to feel like if they don't get to me or if they don't, if I don't put my hands on them, they're not going to heal. Do I do this with people? Yes, absolutely. I love it. I do it on a one-to-one, very personal basis, and it's really fun for me. And it's and it's you know uplifting, you know, and and beneficial health-wise for the for the individual. And it's a wonderful exchange that way. But I don't ever want to create a scenario where someone thinks that I'm their only way. I'm you know this is what ha- this is how God are created. This is how um, religions are made. This is how we get into so much trouble. Um, you know, stepping outside of ourselves and we forget that, you know, you know, so we all have it. And, right. We don't, um, we need, you know, don't it, need somebody outside of us. Right. Exactly. And so basically what I do is, you know, I'm a cheerleader for the spirit. I get up there and I, I, I do my thing and I try to create an atmosphere, an environment yes. that gets people yes. so excited and they're like, whoa, because most people walk out of one of my talks and they're like, man, I want some of what she's got, yeah, you know, well, and that made you like, what's she taking? And, I would uh, love to <laughs> hear more of that. We're, we're going to go to break again. And then when we come back, um, you can share, that's perfect for us because that'll be our, our last segment. And then we can talk about how you can help everybody who's li- listening out there. I want to hear it. So. Hang in there with us. We're going to go to break, and then we'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Healing Light, on Ohm Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. And welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio. And uh, before we went to break, we were talking about living our lives more fully and finding our our chosen path. So, uh, Mary Helen, I, actually, one of the questions I had for you is, um, what role do you think 
uh, intuition plays in finding our chosen path? Um, well, I like, I like the way that you put it when you're talking about finding the divinity within one of the books I'm working on at the moment is called apotheosis, Mm -hmm. which is man discovering his own divinity, you know, the elevation of man to the status of God. That's what the word apotheosis means. That's why it's on the, on the ceiling of the Capitol building in Washington, because that was, you know, the, the, the founding fathers of, of Washington wanted that for our nation when there, it was not founded you know, on Christianity, as many people believe, it was founded on a, a, a very deist philosophy that each of us were gods, you know, mm-hmm. know ye not that ye are gods, and that mm-hmm. we all possess that omnipotence within us, and that we're all a perfect expression of that. And so, you know, when you talk about talking, you're trusting your intuition and, um, you know, reconnecting with that divinity within it's, that's really my bag. That's what I do. I'm trying to constantly remind people that we already are that, which we seek. Mm. We spend so much time and so much money on books and workshops and all this. And I'm like, you already are that you've got it in there already. But the negative self-talk, the, you know, the, the constant bombardment that we go through our, throughout our lifetimes, the negative images of, you know, what a great body is and what a great body isn't, what a great mind is, what it means to be successful, you mm-hmm. know, all of those things things wear a person down to the point where they forget they disconnect and they forget who they actually are now Mm -hmm. part of that veil of forgetfulness is absolutely necessary because if you knew where you came from if you had a conscious awareness 100 percent of the time that you were divine that you were omnipotent that you that you already are that which you seek if you were connected into that all the time there would be absolutely no need for you to be here incarnate on earth so that veil of forgetfulness in order to have the human experience is, 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 is crucial. It's, it's absolutely necessary. But what I think, what, what's, you know, fuel for the fire, what keeps me going, that passion that keeps us burning is knowing that. We don't have to be thinking about it 24-7, but it's the ability to, to still be still and know that I am, you know, sit quietly and reconnect with that. And it, it's like refueling the battery. It's recharging the battery so you can get out there and do more. Um And Mm -hmm. I think that's important. So, yes, when you talk about that, listening to the intuition, that's what you're doing is, you you know, you're you're just cleaning up the radio station. You're tuning in and you're connecting, you know, connecting back to that part of yourself to recharge the batteries. Well, and that's what I love about it, that uh, our intuition seems to guide us to things that, you know, are it seems like our soul knows, um, the universe knows that helps us stay on what I believe is our path. But even though we don't know what that path is and that path could probably be a multitude of infinite kinds of variations of things Um, but but then things start to to happen synchronicities and manifestation happens because we're uh following that guidance and and, but we're not we're we're still part of it we're still in play and we're still living our lives um and so that's kind of what it seems to me is happening with this. But I'm always wondering, you know, I want to stay on my path. I want to know what my path is. And I want to, that's why I find NDEs fascinating and why I think all this mystical metaphysical stuff is fascinating because I always wanted to know what, what am I supposed to be doing right now? So in my life. So what, what's your answer for that? Well, I think that, that, you know, the NDE is a classic example of that. And like I said before, um, you know, I didn't get picked for an NDE because I was so spiritually advanced. Quite the opposite. I was off the path. I was not utilizing my God-given talents. Mm-hmm. I was not serving humanity in the way that I had promised that I would. And so I got a big fat kick in the butt from the universe. And this was told to me by, by mm-hmm. my own my own group, my own guides that I work with. Here, do you remember doing this? And I remember going, oh, my gosh, I did that <laughs> to myself. Are you yeah. kidding you know, and that this was set up. And so there, there must have been some kind of knowing that, that when free will came in and took over, that free will was going to go freewheeling over me and I'd forget what I came here for. And so that's yes. why I had to have the experience was to, to get me back on path. You know what you said in the last show, which I thought was great. Um, and it was, you know, the purpose of life is, you know, and you, your advice was let yourself off the hook, go out there and use yourself up. Don't go away be, uh, beautiful and unfulfilled with your music still left inside you. Get out there and use it up. Yes. What do you mean by that? I mean that I can't even imagine. Like, I don't want to be well-rested when, when death come knocks, comes knocking again. 
<laughs> I want to be on my hands and knees panting going, did y'all see that? That <laughs> was amazing. You know, I want, I, I don't want anything left because of what, you know, it's like being buried with your fortune of what use is being buried with your fortune to a corpse, mm -hmm. you know, to have anything left in you, any energy left, any, anything, you know, uh, other than maybe my conscious mind, I want my body absolutely racked up when I'm old with arthritis and with it, because I've done so much. I want to be, you know, I want to be absolutely spent. Now that doesn't mean I have to be ill. I was watching a video last night of a, of a man who was running a race in Philadelphia and he was 104, Ugh. you know, wow. but I want to be pushing it to the limit. My father was always, you know, constantly saying to me when I was little, he's like, you burn the candle at both ends. He said it to me all the time because I was always on the go. And I'd just look at him in bewilderment and I'd go, why wouldn't you? You know, what in the world am I saving myself for? You know, I, I, yeah. I want to do it all. I want to be here and I want to, you know, it's kind of, but his generation would have been the same one. You know, they'd gone to college and then, you know, the idea of success was that you were in the same job for 40 years and then you got, you punched a clock and you got to watch at the end of it. And, you know, I was talking to a good friend of mine today and we were laughing at how many jobs we've done. You know, yeah. we've, you know, she, and, was, and that she that's said she's okay, a dog right? groomer, she's driven trucks, she's done, yeah, me, I've wait, waited tables mm -hmm. of, of, you know, I've done everything and I love that. I, well, I and think, I encourage I think my that's children a good to do point. that. You know, I think, I think you were saying also, you know, just go out and, and take the risk and not be afraid. And I think that's kind of what you were saying earlier about, you know, we have all that negative talk and that prevents us from doing things and we and then we become afraid. Um, but, you know, and I, I remember I've, uh, had a lot of different quote careers and um, I remember my resume you know it kept switching I went from uh, psychobiology to um, electrical engineering and I remember even going to um, interviewing for a job or something like that and one of the criticisms was well is she going to stick because you know she's kept keeps changing her mind and then you know those kinds of things hold you back then you start criticizing yourself and and you know so I think you can't do that because I'm happy I did all that stuff. I, I, I look back and I love. Oh, absolutely. I and, you know, and I think we have to change our our view of um, what we think other people think we should be doing. Well, like I said before, what happened to me in that accident was that the one agreement that I came back with and it has stuck with me for the rest of my life is I cannot go back and do the level of work that you all are asking me to do. I won't, you know, speaking internationally, writing books, putting my neck out on the line. I cannot care what other people think of me. And they have stayed true to that. That is a part of my personality that simply does not exist. I could not care less if anyone believes my story, if anyone likes me, if they don't. I enjoy it when they do like me, but I am not offended and hurt if they don't. And, you know, one of my my greatest pleasures is when I get up on stage and somebody calls my name and they go, Dr. Mary Helen Hensley. That absolutely makes me hee-haw. It makes me laugh so loud. Like I became a doctor by the skin of my teeth. I could barely get through the math part <laughs> of the organic chemistry. Now the body and all that stuff, I was really good at compassion with people, knowing you know, intuitively what's going on. Absolutely. But the nuts and bolts of the science that I had to do to get there, I mean, I raped by and when I hear my name called out when I'm being called up to a stage or whatever I actually laugh most of the time going I, <laughs> I remember serving beers and slinging hash and do you know uh waitressing in the uh -huh. waffle house and and I go and now they're calling me doctor and I just think it's hysterical do you know wow, because yeah. I've just done so many things and I and I'm proud of having done so many things and by <laughs> god I am nowhere near finished you know <laughs> and, and, yeah absolutely well and so I, and that's supported by you having gone through your life review and seeing I guess what I would call the true value right the true value absolutely but yeah it doesn't and, matter. And, it's, and it's following that intuition Lisa it's that whole idea that if your gut is telling you you're not happy in this job or it has served its purpose or a relationship, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. we've gotten so conditioned to believe that something's got to be lifelong. We've got, and I'm like, that, that doesn't make sense. You don't stay in the same classroom in school for your entire <laughs> life. You move from class to class to class to class and then you graduate, you know, but we don't treat our actual lives that way. 
You know, oh, we, we, yeah. we try to condition ourselves and teach our children to stay in the same thing, stay where it's safe. Like here in Ireland, you know, if you get a government job, good Lord, don't you dare give up the government job. You know, you got a pension and then they're in there for their whole life. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't even think the horror of that. And, yes. um, and, and then I guess having faith, you know, and then have, face. It, it, that's the fear. And then, um, and then what we have to do to step out of that is have that faith and, you know, the trust and, and being okay with that. And I, that's, that, those are huge lessons, huge, huge. Well, we're coming Absolutely. up to the, <laughs> the end of our show. I can't believe it just zoomed right by again. I'm more. <laughs> <laughs> you are you you bring the the uh, the light speed of heaven with you it's like amazing and i always learn so much from you on the show <laughs> thank you so so much for being with us it's like um enlightening i love it i love it and you've got such a great message for everybody out there um and i hope you know I, yeah, thank you for being on the show and enlightening our listeners and myself oh well you're the hostess with the most as i I have to say you've got great questions and you know you're you're steering people always back to that space of follow the intuition know your own divinity and that's what I'm all about and so I'm fully supportive of what you do and I think it's a wonderful wonderful gift that you're giving to the world and I thank you from from the world on behalf of the world we thank oh, you thank you that's awesome what a wonderful way to to end our show thanks Mary Helen and you know you're always welcome to come back we'd love to have you back look forward to it Thanks. You've been listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio, and we are conscious living for your soul. So tune in right here on the radio next time. Angel blessings to everyone. Thanks for listening.